Okay, so here we're going to start talking about 3D dynamics. Okay, um, so just recall, we have for 2D dynamics, We had two equations for a rigid body. If you had a rigid body and it had a bunch of forces on it and potentially some uh, torques acting on it uh, and there was a uh, center of mass G, uh, then you had two equations. One was the sum of all forces on the rigid body was equal to mass of the rigid body times acceleration of the center of mass of the rigid body. That was equation number one. and to the sum of all moments on the rigid body about the point G was equal to I alpha, where uh, I was about the point G, uh, about a, a axis perpendicular to the plane, and alpha equals alpha times EZ, where EZ was perpendicular to the plane, okay? Um, so you could actually write this as uh, IG D omega by DT EZ, where omega is angular velocity. Uh, of course, alpha is angular acceleration. Uh, and you could really write this as d by dt of h g, where h g is the angular momentum, h about g, angular momentum about G where H G is uh, I G um, omega if you will okay so in this case, in 2D, IG is uh, some constant, and omega can change with the motion of the body. Okay, so that's, those are the 2D equations that you've used over and over again over the last few weeks. Um, let's write down the 3D equations of motion for a single rigid body. So these are the 3D equations of motion. for a single rigid body. Well, equation number one is uh, for any free body diagram or for a single rigid body, we have sum of all forces equals mass of the all the objects in the rigid body uh, times acceleration of the center of mass of the rigid body, okay? Or the free body diagram. And if you had uh, lots of individual masses comprising the free body diagram, of course, it's equal to mass one times AG one plus mass 2 times AG2, etc. So this equation is exactly the same as for 2D, except everything is uh, expressed uh, done in 3D. Exactly the same. 
okay um, and then now let's look at uh, the other equation which is the angular momentum equation um, for a single rigid body So it turns out uh, the version that uh, works uh, in 3D is actually this version. Um, it turns out this version doesn't quite work because uh, certain things that we have defined here are specific to 2D. Uh, so in 3D for a single rigid body, it turns out that we can do sum of all moments about the center of mass in 3D. Uh, so this is the sum of all moments. And that is going to be equal to the rate of change of what we call the angular momentum of the object of the rigid body of the single rigid body about the point g okay rate of change of angular momentum about oh. about G, um, where angular momentum is H G. Um, okay, so that's the uh, equation. Uh, the sum of all moments is basically computed as before. Uh, it's going to be, if you have a bunch of different forces, you would compute it as uh, essentially um, summation R uh, PI with respect to G cross F I. So if there are uh, forces uh, F1, F2, F3, and they're acting at P1, P2, P3, uh, then uh, you would essentially have uh, the summation. That's going to be sum of all moments. Uh, the angular momentum, however, is, uh, is a different quantity. So the angular momentum for a single rigid body is defined as follows. It's defined as I omega, okay? Well, it is equal to, let's say, not defined as. Um, so let me box these things. Okay, so this is the angular momentum equation. This is how angular momentum is defined. Analogous to how it's defined in 2D uh, here. Uh, but it turns out each of these quantities is uh, sort of more uh, complex, complicated, if you will, in 3D. So I is, uh, this is still I uh, about a point G. Um, Ig is the moment of inertia of the rigid body um, no longer a scalar Uh, and really no longer potentially, um, well, it's a constant, but it's a constant in, in a certain coordinate frame, in a body fixed coordinate frame. Uh, but but it's, it is a uh, tensor, 
by which we mean a general linear transformation And uh, essentially, it's a three by three matrix. Once can be represented by a three by three matrix if we uh, pick a particular coordinate frame. So we'll talk about this in more detail. Moment of inertia in a separate lecture. Uh, how it's defined, how it's computed, both in 2D and 3D, etc. So we'll talk about that separately. Uh, okay, so that's the moment of inertia. Uh, it's now a tensor or a 3 by 3 matrix, depending on your point of view. Uh, now, omega is now, again, angular velocity, but in 3D. in the sense that you can have an object whose angular velocity changes and the uh, axis about which it's rotating changes, uh, the, the uh, magnitude of uh, the rotational speed about the axis can change, etc. cetera. So uh, doing 3D dynamics requires us to develop a language to think about representing 3D motion 3D motion uh, consisting of 3D translations and rotations. So to uh, even define what it means to say angular velocity in 3D, for instance, uh, to do 3D dynamics, we need to develop language to represent 3D motion, specifically 3D rotations. So we want to be able to represent 3D rotations um, including 3D uh, angular velocity and 3D angular accelerations. Let me just use uh, notation here, 3D omega, alpha, your moment of inertia matrix, Hg, um, uh, d by dt of Hg. So how to compute all these things? Um, we need to sort of develop a language uh, and uh, formalism for doing all that. Um, so that's what we will do next, which is uh, 3D kinematics. specifically ways of rota uh, representing rotations. Uh, we will talk about uh, rotation matrices. Uh, the so-called Euler angles. Um, quaternions, perhaps. Um, axis angle representations, which is related to quaternions. Etc. Uh, so we shall do that in a series of mini lectures. So for now, though, uh, 
what we've done in this lecture, in this short lecture, is essentially uh, talked about the two basic equations of 3D dynamics, which are still F equals MA, sum of forces equals mass times acceleration, for any single rigid body or any collection of rigid bodies in a free body diagram. And then for any single rigid body, we have sum of all moments equals the rate of change of angular momentum about the point G. So those are the two main equations. Let me add a third equation, which is analogous to what we've used in 2D. Um, so let's call this, uh, this is, I guess we've already called this equation number one, equation number two. Equation number three, variant of two, more useful variant of two, Um, is sum of all moments about some other point P equals D by DT, quite analogous to what we had before. It's still D by DT of HG plus R P with respect to G cross M A G, where the acceleration is um, represented um, in an inertial frame, okay? Uh, so this is equation number three. It's taking moments about a different point uh, from the center of mass. This is still for a single rigid body. Uh, in 3D. Okay, this is taking moments about P, which may not be equal to G. Uh, of course, if it's equal to G, it will uh, specialize to the old uh, equation, but if it's not equal to G, this is the equation that we want to use. And the uh, imp important thing to realize is that this is not, no longer equal to I alpha. It's a more complicated object uh, that will involve uh, us trying to write these things in uh, terms of uh, 3D sort of um, representations, I guess. Okay. Um, we'll stop there for this mini lecture and then I will expand on 3D kinematics in the next lecture and we shall go from there.